community radio stations, AYB, SRBC, or the blog that they really can rely on the platform where they want comments in on the press conference. We tell them thank you for your attention. Government, they for serve you, the citizens. Information and rights. What you do now? Now, for given that information, they will get rights to and entitled to. So, as I don't come, it's no matter how difficult the conversation, how tough or tense, we, as the ministry, they continue for being the rights players, the people that we uh, sappy for come and talk to now. Before I introduce the panel, I want to start to provide the news updates as usual. Just quickly on what happened since we last met. Yesterday, the uh, Ministry of Gender and Children's Affairs, Ministry of Information, and the Office of the President, Rebo, and other partner them, we came together and we organized a town hall meeting on how we defend this sexual and gender-based violence in this country. Well over 600 people have gathered at Free Town City Council the Hall. We get an in-depth conversation with all the experts there, and we talk about how we continue this conversation in other parts of the country. One for ten, thank you to all my who join me for making this happen. Parliament of Salundo passed one landmark law, what they call the Criminal Procedure Act of 2024. This milestone that they only work for for over 20 years. President Bill, the promise in the manifesto, say he go repeal and replace the old act we call 1965. And the artwork of the AG. Mohamed Lamin Tara Lebenodia was a colleague there, Mr. Osman Kanu, the Solicitor General, Mr. Kowa, and all the other members and Deputy AG, Mr. Alpha CC, that they helped for deliver this major, major bill. We don't change for putting it, and we can ask Mr. Kanu, let's provide some details on what this bill here mean. One thing we people don't be talk about the bill so far, the so called about the jury process and the jury system where members department them in their wisdom. They say we for join other courts here, we don't remove the jury system. Like as I can do normally now, some fake news for companies talk. So even before I go to Mr. Kano, I just want to make some facts known. No, we just start here now. Over 95% of the cases in our courts no include jury. So the one who say we don't put all justice because we don't put jury, so that the one for talk say all the cases they will only do in the past, justice not be paper. Even the actual repeal we say the jury system they deserve for case them where the penalty than the death penalty. By law, we don't prove death penalty. So the major thing is the fact that we can't explain to one another the lawyer there. So we don't prove the death penalty. So man also talk like that as we don't prove the jury system. Plenty, plenty consider that Mr. Kandel will give the list. So in fact, some justice system that they will not even get jury system is at all. And for years, they don't do very well in the justice system. The other part of the family don't know that, that the law don't make provision for what they call assessors. So the jury system, the starts of the conversation, they say, ah, now you pay as them. God forbid if they indict uh, Mr. Bokai Abel Aziz Bayo, Naya Bawo Naya, not to deputy minister, they, therefore form that jury law. And then we have the ending around the courts, and then the jury law. And if one person not come, the case they delay. If they give one person small team, he will work on the case. So people they say, oh, I want to make me, me fit in the hands of 12 people and in the hands of one person. 
the judge he at least be accountable and he explained the judge only to take one or two words in that people. So again, the justice system is intact and the process will not follow now don't go through the, the parliamentary and the way that they will elect in the wisdom they follow plenty other jurisdictions like in fact most of uh, English speaking West Africa most of East Africa they don't get away with that old archaic system they and you know find their people and share fake news and just spread anxiety among people them for team will not be at all. We will discuss this back today and we just want to start with that day. Africa Development Bank don't give salon about $20 million for one new initiative what they call Job Creation for Youth and Women in Climate Smart Agriculture Value Chains and Waste Management. Now remember say then we can all the kind of money 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 we talk eh? we say because the better better than they will so the sign sign agreements and present bill all the things that we don't do it will be a good food. Uh, Ministry of Health don't launch the what they call the Kumbra app. We have the pregnancy registration and service tracking app for address the country in high maternal mortality rates. The app, the monitor and track the health of pregnant women then and go help we for make sure safe women are not dying when they go for born picking across the country. Alright. I'll tap here now for the news. On our own nominee deputy minister, we in uh, Al Hajj, uh, Sheikh Al Hajj Bokari Abdel Aziz Bawo. I see no man. If you want to make names, I'm not calling you names today. No, no, no. What do you call a white man? Now, if possible, you want to make no sense. Now we call you names. Um, we very honored for Kate Snyder today, Her Excellency, the President, the duly elected President of the Salon Bar Association, Madam Tima Adama Jensen Kamara. Very, very honored for Kate Snyder's platform for the very first time. We look forward to hearing from you. You plan to what you do, and also your comments on the big topic we're going to have today. Also, for the first time, a very distinguished um, servant, the Director of Public Prosecutions for the Republic of Sierra Leone, is an Alaji. Alaji Usman Kano, in the school. I have to make something clear. We invite a civil society activist. We are the coordinator for Budget Advocacy Network, named Abubakar Kamara. I take pride in the way I don't conduct these press conferences and don't be minister for the year. People don't disagree with government fiercely. I don't believe in Canada. Next to people the way they disagree with. I don't bring our opposition leaders in this panel. I don't know with integrity and with transparency. Mr. Abubakar Kamara confirmed for say you can hire. I send a picture we put on the flyer. We are now sir, say you can. About 20 minutes ago, he sent me a text. Because he not gets a copy of the report who they can, who they can discuss. He both don't decide, say enough for camp. I think that the service people there and I find that in the age today, frankly, not respectful to the people of this country and not respectful to the people within Naya. The report, as we can discuss Naya, I will tell and say, obviously, the people who are supposed to report, for produce report and we produce, and I explain to us that the process and the steps we can discuss. And I say, in group, no issue, let's release in this issue. We should say an interested party. I say, you really can't, but it can blast for government. You get the mic for one. But today, he decides, say, in the last minute, he will not will come for seek for sabotage the process where I find not just unfortunate, but also disrespectful. And I really wish that in interaction, as we continue for creating an open 
government's platform will continue to follow up and engage with the three teachers that we ought to most expect. And Kenya and the civilized societies really got that in it for council a big engagement with touch extraordinary extraordinarily things excuse. Alright, we don't do with that. No canal to buy. Mr. Kano, are you forced to be put on the hot seat? The theme for today, the, the press sector just put out press statements. Actually, don't start by Pekka Rina, so that people in the winner see it. Then go, oh, see, the, the president and the lawyer and the paper in the past will be going out to the break. Just pass me the paper. Thank you very much, Madam President. Updates of the tribunal reports from the suspended Auditor General and Deputy Auditor General. Mrs. Larry Lopias and Mr. Tamba Momo, respectively. State House, date Tuesday, 9th July 2024. On Wednesday, 12 June 2024, His Excellency President Dr. Julius Madabio received the reports from the chairperson of the tribunal that was set up to investigate the suspended Auditor General and Deputy Auditor General, respectively. Following the perusal of the reports, the general public is hereby informed that His Excellency the President has accepted all the recommendations of the report, among which is the removal of the suspended Auditor General and Deputy Auditor General. Accordingly, having satisfied Section 137.7a of the Constitution of Sierra Leone 1991, the President has directed the following that the Attorney General and Minister of Justice initiates the necessary procedure for the removal of the suspended Auditor General, Mrs. Naya Tilopias, pursuant to Section 1377B of the Constitution of Sierra Leone 1991, that the Audit Service Board pursues action for the removal of the suspended Deputy Auditor General, Mr. Tamba Momo. End. For the family and host, we know they follow the English, we they can, can talk. The press secretary just said they don't agree with the reports. And he say, and the reports and recommendations say, and for pool, the Auditor General, according to the Constitution, say, and for table line in the Parliament, and that the Audit Service the Board for pool, because by the law, the, the, the Auditor General and Parliament, the Deputy, the, the, the Board, the press secretary don't agree. Mr. Kano, the obvious question on that, people want to know, hey, yeah, what's it inside the report? Why we not immediately publish the full of the report? But I want to talk about the process of all of this. What's it happen? How we now follow the law, step by step, because we are the legal advisors of his expertise and we in our government, and what the people to expect next. I want the people to pay close attention. It's a very distinguished lawyer. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister, and um, thank you very much, everybody. Um, um, I'm grateful for being um, given this opportunity to be here for the first time, and uh, especially for for can be elaborate on a very topical issue. But um, we do not leave. I will ask you now for just given us just a brief context with regards to what actually transpired with uh, the Lara Pierce Tribunal. Um, so that at the end of the day, everybody will leave here with an understanding on having a background of the processes. So we don't have leave, I just will just read a brief background and now we can now engage into the position now with um, the Minister Dori. Yeah? <coughs> So, the Auditor General and um, Deputy Auditor General of the Audit Service Sierra Leone were both suspended from office in November 2021 for stated misconduct or lack of professional performance. They are mixed up make a privilege. This press conference, I really didn't see say a clear for talk. All right. So, I'm not saying you get the skits, but mix it up a little bit. Right. Yeah. So, as I say, the Auditor General and the Deputy in um, November 2021, they suspended for stated misconduct. Um, what is stated misconduct? 
the constitution make provision for serving the angels their way. Now, you employers, and in this case, the president, where as a professional, where you actually not live up to, they can actually cite you for that behavior as a stated misconduct. But um, given the position of the uh, Auditor General in the protection where the Constitution, according to the Auditor General, if you go under Section 119 of the Constitution, you cannot now discipline or remove the Auditor General without invoking Section 137 of the Constitution. Now, some people might ask, why do you need to invoke Section 137? of the Constitution, given the fact that the, the Auditor General is just a public officer and not a judge. But my um, um, conclusion with that will only be the kind of the independence where the Constitution won't be to the Auditor General. Because obviously removing a judge is not as easy when you actually look at the Tribunal Way 137, the actual is set up for letting you remove her. So that's kind of the, um, the protection that has been given to the Auditor General. So when the Auditor General uh, suspended me in deputy, obviously um, a tribunal was set up for them to actually now investigate on their alleged misconduct here, where um, then they alleged say they, they do, so that the tribunal now will investigate them. Then the tribunal where they actually then set up for let them investigate them um, by His Excellency the President um, under the provision they were already mentioned, 119 and 137. The members that were actually comprised of this um, 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 tribunal was headed by a chairperson, um, a former Supreme Court judge, Justice Niao Jones and a high court judge, as Ivan Sisse, and a lawyer, Ellen Farmer, who is a lawyer of more than 20 years standing. They are the ones who actually comprise the tribunal. Obviously, the mandate, the authority will the begin this tribunal, was for letting consider the allegations we have already stated, the misconduct and or lack of uh, professional performance of the Auditor General and in Deputy Tamba Momo. Um, the, also, the, the immediate mandate for investigating the audit service with particular reference to the performance or lack thereof of the Auditor General and Samba Momo and other related matter. Obviously, the tribunal then gets their new guidelines once the tribunal comments as to how we therefore proceed where they require both lawyers for the states and lawyers for large players who actually follow those guidelines. But another interesting thing, I know say a lot of people in Milan that actually talk about the, why the, the tribunal takes so long in actually proceeding. Um, which maybe the general public might not be aware, during this process, there were preliminary objections that was being filed by solicitors from uh, representing the um, Auditor General and the Deputy Auditor General. So obviously as a state, um, lawyers representing the Attorney General, we have to respond to those preliminary objections. And obviously there was also an application filed in the Supreme Court, which again, um, there have been questions that uh, maybe the state, um, the Attorney General did not respond to that um, application, which again, it's a misinformation because in response to that application, what the Attorney General um, Office and lawyers did was to file a preliminary objection to that application. So as a result, we did not file a statement to that, our defense to that application because we have an objection which we have filed. And as lawyers will tell you, given the fact that we are challenging jurisdiction of the Supreme Court, if those matters were to be had, if they get for a relay case they day, a real case then we have for a reforce. So until they are a real case, obviously they cannot now listen to the case where the um, lawyers then for Lara Tilopias then, then file challenging again the 
jurisdiction of the tribunal. So obviously the tribunal then proceed um, with we um, lawyers representing the Attorney General presenting the case and obviously then gets opportunity as well for cross-examining the witnesses that we will bring up and at the end of the day they said presents the new witnesses um, before we actually now concluding the case. Um, at the end of the process, obviously the tribunal then, then adjourn for ruling, which again during that process there is a lot of fear and cry. We then say um, the time takes so long for let the um, tribunal arrive at a decision. In other words, why is it beyond the three months um, given to um, 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 judgment for um, the court system? But well, again, that is unfortunately is I would not disrespect to the uh, people who are making those comment. They were now equating the tribunal with a court. It's not a court. It has when a tribunal makes the judgment, a judgment has the force of a high court judgment. But the tribunal in actually reaching their decision sometimes takes longer because it's an inquiry process. Sometimes, even after when the lawyers they don't finish their own submissions, the members of the tribunal are at liberty for ask more questions, probing questions, because it's like it's an inquisitorial system. In other words, the tribunal, they get power for ask questions. Inquisitorial say the tribunal, and then they ask questions. What we have in Sierra Leone is an adversarial system where lawyers argue, and obviously the judge will rule. And the judge is just there to maintain the balance. But the tribunal is more of an inquiry process, so it takes a lot longer. So the three months that you are referring to, it's unfortunate. It's a lack of understanding of what um, the position of a tribunal. So at the end of the day, we all learn, because at the end of the day, we don't have a monopoly of knowledge. So, but when these issues come up, I think this gives us an opportunity so that we can address that. If in the future, maybe a tribunal is taking the time to reach a decision, we know why, because it's not um, a simple process. So finally, the tribunal may arrive at a decision where now um, recommendations were made with regards to the, um, the position of the, um, the Auditor General and the Deputy Auditor General. But um, the recommendation was made I mean, for the Auditor General to be removed from office, and that recommendation was submitted to His Excellency, His Excellency the President. And obviously, for the uh, Deputy Director General, uh, Auditor General, for reference to be made to the Board of the Audit Service Sierra Leone, because they are the, the body that they get power for actually remove the Deputy Auditor the General. Why is like I said on earlier on, the um, Section 137 now bring the Auditor General um, on the, the judges in removal. So only Parliament, in actual fact, it's only Parliament can decide on her removal. It's not the President. What the tribunal is actually doing it's an advisory tribunal based on looking at what has been presented before the tribunal, the argument, obviously, the lawyers for the states, the attorney general, has made a case that indeed there is a breach for this, for them to now arrive at that recommendation for the auditor general to be removed. But it does not stop there. Because once those recommendations are made, the president is at liberty again to look at those rep recommendations and now decide what's the next step. And that next step, I believe, is the press release that the minister they actually mentioned today in terms of now the president to accept the recommendation. The next step is for parliament on the section 137 um, B for Parliament not to sit down, but follow the sit down and then deliberate on the, re the report and take a decision. So I will stop there for now. Um, I'll hand over to the Minister. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Kamo.
think of it, to acknowledge the presence of somebody we know in an introduction, the Honorable Alhaji, another Alhaji. In an actual Alhaji, actually. Some of them I have called Alhaji. Uh, Alhaji Dr. Alpha Khan, um, the presidential spokesperson and former Minister of Information as well, and former Minister of Mines, and former, uh, not last of those, uh, plenty. All right, so we can listen to um, the allergy uh, on this issue, but I have a quick question for Mr. Cameron in regards to our president. Mr. Cameron, just for avoidance of doubts, what's in the allegations against the Auditor General? What is the tribunal of fair say they agree with or they fair against you? What do you see? I'm a bit guided um, because. <laughs> Um, guided in the sense that I don't want really for going to the report because it's a question that will allow me to go into the report. Now, the reason why I'm saying that the reports will be out to the public at some point. Now, like I've been telling you earlier, just, just not, not within, not the, within just, the, just like. Waiting that waiting he calls to the tribunal. So I just want to remind people that waiting he calls. So one of one of the main issues with uh -huh. we allege say there's been a breach of confidentiality uh -huh. by the um, auditor general in terms of um, way auditors they call third party confirmation and all that issues. Where as a professional um, there are certain things that you should not do. Okay. So that's one of the main things that trigger the investigation. And confidentiality, as we know, expands in every aspect of our life. So as a professional and more so an auditor, when you breach confidentiality, it's a serious breach. Okay. Just in terms of steps, with the announcement from the press secretary today, we will make public, because first of all, we don't make public the outcome. The president don't agree. The, 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 um, the tribunal will include very distinguished aliens there. The former Supreme Court Justice, as you say, the former High Court Judge, also a High Court Judge, and a very distinguished lawyer. So these are people we also very, very understand in our society. The conclusion that that enough grounds for recommending the removal of both the Auditor General and PC. Mr. President, you don't study the reports and all the findings, you don't accept the recommendations. We think that the next step. Okay, the next step is simple. Um, maybe as well as you need your leave again. Yes. I go I will borrow me calling me president in in constitution. I will just read one three seven um, B for now because I think it's the A that was mentioned. Yeah, constitution. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I will just read 1377 again. It says, A judge of the Superior Court of Judicature shall be removed from office by the President. A. If the question of his removal from office has been referred to a tribunal appointed under subsection 5. And the tribunal has recommended to the president that he ought to be removed from office. And B, if his removal has been approved by two thirds majority in parliament. So if you look at the press release this morning, uh, 137A has been complied with. The tribunal has been set up, the tribunal don't report, don't recommend a removal. So the next step is for the B part to be complied with, and that is going to Parliament. Do we that? Is there a timeline? <laughs> then ask for the I don't think they are So I'll uh, just uh, move the process forward. Uh, I cannot sit here and say timeline.
Monday because um, the section actually provides a timeline, but I believe, say, in the interest of justice, I believe, say, they need to do that as soon as possible. Put on the Put on the We need to do that. The Attorney General Office. Again, okay. <laughs> I think we disband telling the other cards today more than immediately. Because, as you might know, I try to be fair. The job we do here is to provide information to the people of Salo. And that's important. So, we know they sugarcoat anything. We will even government officials here and ask them serious questions. And they answer serious. So, the AG office, the president don't stop. The AG office is now the president's lawyer. Say so that it's taken forward now. And the AG office, I actually spoke to the AG last night on this issue. They plan soonest for now table this. Um, report to Parliament, and then Parliament now gets an obligation for looking to her and, and, and debate and take a vote on the conclusion. But also, if I may add, also don't forget, given timelines, obviously, Parliament can get their own timeline. Correct. No, yeah, so just on the new side, from the executive, we will go to Parliament, and then Parliament now, of course, following the new schedule, they go forward. Okay, Mr. Kama, I think we don't uh, get here. Yeah, okay, you a leader. Look out to Her Excellency. First of all, um, I want to take the opportunity for publicly congratulate you on your election as President of the Association and also on uh, your successful tenure as the very distinguished chair of the Board of the National Revenue Authority. I think every year, I don't pay attention, will say you perform with distinction and excellence, and the committee grateful for your service. And for all the work we do there, for the work we must see continue for it. So first of all, start with the, from you the new position as Sierra Leone as a, uh, Association President. Share with the people of Salon briefly what a vision. Why you believe say you colleague them give you this singular honor for being a president and what you hope for achieve. No, just stop that there for a few minutes, and then I want to get your comments on uh, this report and the process. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Thank you very much for that. And thank you very much to you and your team for inviting me also today, for giving this honor, for coming to sit on Nadi's platform and talk to the people of Southern. And I want to say thank you to your ministry for when you start something like this, for making the inform the people of Salon, within the government and other people then that this country here they do because it could let the people of Salon be informed of what they go on at the country. Thank you very much, and I wish you all the best in your team now in our office. So I want to first of all say thank you to my colleagues that we voted me in as president of the Sierra Leone Association. It wasn't an easy journey, but I came out successful. Now, I strongly believe say I win on waiting we campaign on that I mean your team when I team raised the bar, which we campaign on standards, empowerment and welfare. Um but people then are talking about with me say some of them they complain for certain standards of the lawyers then. We need for looking to her. Even though me not just president of the Bar Association, me not to, I would say, the General Legal Council, even though me not a member, when the General Legal Council get the mandate for listening to disciplinary actions against lawyers and so. But we need help for make sure say we push go before the standards and make sure so we try to empower with lawyers then. The world don't go before. For example, if you talk about technology law, if you talk about when they talk now about AI and all that team and day. We really get lawyers then we specialize in this. Not to say they don't want to work, but if we need um, further studies, if they will need other things then. So we the kind for see how we could help that, especially when it comes to scholarships and internships. So um, and of course as we don't say we they look for the welfare. So we vigorously campaign on that and we win on that note. But one of the main, main, I would say, flagship program is the Serial Bar Association and the oldest bar association of Sub-Saharan Africa. 
And it's really a shame that we don't get a sanitaria where we will say now we own. We don't get the state and we want to tell the attorney general and thank you. We give a space na the special court complex. We say we don't get a small office where we know the payment, but it makes sure say we get them. The attorney general, by the way, now the titular head of the bar. So it makes sure say we get this. And now the current attorney general, when I'm Mr. Mohamed Lamin Tagawali, who want to tell and thank him. But we said one go further than that, all man they go, where we go now, just two hours flight from here to Ghana, you can see them get their own building, then get their own secretariat. When you reach there, you know one commodity. We know of course they tell you say the council will begin invite them and will private chambers then. It will find where we in, you say the council we as the bar association, we actually care you good now with secretariat. We actually they're about for hit the ground running. What will they do? We acquire a land and after that we begin build. Not to say the association get money, but we do fundraising. And with somebody like Suma Adam Magento Kamarati now for fundraising. The man says self the contributes because they say charity begins at home. So the stone then, the cement then, and everything will be make sure say Mohammed Gentle come and appear. Yeah. Because now in responsibility that for supporting where public commitments, our commitments is so gentle. <laughs> and where is that? Anybody in the most will be executive knock on the account board for the that day. And the other thing again where we realize is that private practitioners, lawyers then. Some people don't know say they don't get pension. So what we decide for do is for them we actually able for collaborate with the leadership of masses, for low initiatives what they call the private pension scheme for lawyers who say they will pay to this scheme and in their old age they will get a defeating old age. We can see some lawyers that don't do so well. I know the majority of them I don't see lawyers in their old age. They don't even look after themselves anymore. Because as lawyers, we know they retire. Not only with the body don't tire. Now you go sit on that house. And sometimes we don't tire, that money you know they can in, it will affect your health. So now that's when they hit the ground running and I will make sure say if we, even if we don't complete the building, we will get very close. How long are you tenure? Two years. Okay, so you get a two year tenure. Instead of two year day, we're going to be doing your career often for checking and make sure see the promises that we don't make that not just to the lawyers then, but we will raise the bar and improve the quality of the legal service that is considered legal profession that the people of Salon the benefit. So that will put you as well a very important topic. We'll focus now on the lawyers and the tribunal and the steps and so far. The Salon Bar Association will not observe this process. I want to just comment on which one they observe, so that which one they look at. And if an opportunity as well, we we'll do some civic education on the steps and so people understand for complement with things that can be done. Yes, um, I'm glad you said maybe I would be here so today, and I'm one person where they always make sure they since they take office for make sure they in a talk on behalf of the bar association and give, lend a voice. And tell people then the kind of say the civic education for educate them on that. Now I don't keep releasing to the DPP. I don't talk about the steps we um, government take and the tribunal we then set. And of course, the one we don't always be where people they don't talk about the topical. It was about the Supreme Court application. Then file application. They talk saying we get problem with the people then, that's not the lawyers for Madame Lara Telopia. Say the people that with their appoint for Sidon and this tribunal yeah, so. It's good the DPP they are today don't educate me for tell me say no. When they do that one day, then raise a preliminary objection for talk say no. Now we first don't file we own case. Let will answer to the case, we will go before the tribunal, cross examination will take place, all things will take place. We will all get the opportunity and right for make will be hard. So when we done with that day, whichever step again, maybe we will go and take, we will keep continuing with that. So the act will say the Supreme Court will take precedence over the tribunal. 
But the constitution will be follow section um, 137 from subsection 4 to subsection 7. Clearly states how you get for go about with a tribunal where it come to the um, auditor general. Because if you read that section, you will see no more who said they talk all over about um, a court, a, um, a judge. But section 1199 tell me say, the same way how you they remove judge, now the same way you they remove an auditor general. The only thing when we take notes is that this section in the talk about the auditor general, and not the talk but in deputy. I understand that the tribunal do what they can do, and they do the inquiry with regards to both the auditor general and in deputy. Now that makes, if we look at the press release we come out today from the office of the press secretary, it talks say, yes, 137A has been complied with. So waiting at the net way forward now, with the auditor general, then they use 137B. But the president's go further for the directive say, let me now take the deputy auditor general to the board. We all know tried law where it comes to employment, he who hires fires. Simply mean the deputy na the board na in the higher hand. So meaning anything that can do with in removal, na the board the removal. Another one talks say the board in hands tied. But the only difference here is the board cannot investigate anymore. Because the tribunal don't investigate on their behalf. And this same constitution now they tell me say that tribunal only applicable to the auditor general. So I just wonder we take note of that because as an association, we are the legal conscience of the nation. And among anything, what would they do? We call mandates now for safeguard the human rights. This thing takes close to about two and a half years. Is it that if the board, I know they say if it don't be so, but is it that if the board for don't investigate the deputy with this investigation for don't happen and don't and in your verdict given by the board and if they, they remove and they find out one thing, they remove out, they don't find out one thing and left them. Again, we go left down there to the tribunal and to the lawyers then will be they represent the deputy auditor general because I believe that could have been a preliminary objection or something they could have raised to say the deputy subjected to this tribunal by law and they left him open. But as a lawyer and as the president of the Bar Association, I get concerned with that. Now moving forward, we don't hear it from the DPP. They tell me, say, the only way, even though the recommendation now for re based on the press release, I want to make a clear say, I not see the report yet, I not read that yet, and they go purely by the press release where the Office of the Press Secretary released today. So let's say the recommendation according to what it may say, now for remove both the uh, Auditor General and in deputy. One has been sent to Parliament and the process to be initiated or guided by the Attorney General. We could just say no more. All the stakeholders that we concern, the Attorney General, Parliament, for Duya, let them haste you. Me now want, and I just want to take the general cap and say, the Auditor General now, woman, it's been a long journey for her. We in need for no as to whether Parliament will grieve or remove her, meaning it's a two thirds. Two thirds not to be picking and um, percentage in parliament. So whether they will remove them or whether they're not going to remove them based on the voting. So me they pay the attorney general office for say do you the best way they say where you care go matter a court. They say justice delayed is justice denied. Time we don't already go, two and a half years or so. Do you make them go 
and make sure say the attorney general do what they do as quickly as possible. Then they don't go fail of this case. They know everything will really happen. Now the outcome number they not be no more. They not know the outcome now. If they can speedily send this now parliament before parliament they recess, let them look into this. Let them be that woman day in results as to whether they will pull them or they not go pull them. And secondly, send the deputy in your to the board. Make them make sure say them follow what the law say and make them make sure say they uphold the law. Because now that we they for and we they monitor and we they watch. After one week, if we see say we don't hear nothing, we pay a rule we can't do now. We they make sure say we we this could be done as speedily as possible. Wonderful. Thank you very much. We appreciate this and session and perspective on this issue. Uh, Mr. 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 If uh, we just come in briefly. You want to come in briefly? briefly. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Because I want to The President raised waiting the Deputy of the Auditor General of the Action with the two before the tribunal. The reason why the Deputy Auditor General was before the tribunal because he had acted as an Auditor General. So the inquiry now be based on in activities as, as an acting. So when it was time when he acts as Auditor General, we needed to investigate him. So that's why it was before the tribunal. That's the reason why even when the tribunal reached a conclusion, okay. they still cannot send him to Parliament like the Auditor General, but okay. now send him to the board. Okay. So I think we will we we'll left at that. The media will get an opportunity to start to ask the question. Excuse me. Just to make clear again, it's make good again conversation. Two of the top brains that are this country when it comes to legal issues, it's there, explain, get a debate, improve and civic education, public information and rights, and citizens with the rights to this information, and they could be in their account. And as you see, the bar association, they make an appeal, they advocate as well, they talk about the law, and we hear as well, the response from government. That and the kind of government we press the bill, one follow bill, an open government, we we get a conversation. Now the talk small bits to politics because we get the president and spokesman. Uh, I think last night, Dr. Samuel Wilson Kamara pulled a statement and do a video say against the nation. Since the tripartite report come on, we don't make we don't go out of the way now yeah, for Preza as lead negotiator alongside the chief minister. The report, by the way, clear. These sides they come together, the recommendations are clear. Eight recommendations. You don't see it, follow Minister of Information and Platforms. We don't go simplify the versions of all 80 of them. In the Dr. Samara Kamara attend the ceremony after the written report. The hand that over to His Excellency, the Fountain of Honor, duly elected President of this country, President Julius Mada, the winner in Seto. In EU speech, he referred to President Julius Mada Bill multiple times as His Excellency, the President, and all that. Very clear process. Inside the report, even areas where not agree in the report, because when I did this side, so they did not agree together. They separate that side in the corner, divergent views. After they state divergent views, both sides, they prepare their own divergent recommendations, separate. ABC prepare their own, SWD prepare their own, government of Salud prepare their own. We put, we agree for put all the recommendations, the divergent ones, under inside the report. So it's separate from the 81. Because the point of the tripartite is put until they will agree on wide ranging recommendations. Even among the APC recommendations, the team the way Dr. Samuel Kamara said yesterday for insights and try for cause further chaos and instability in this country. The only thing. So we will separate the words of Dr. Kamara. We issue way after the process done from the works 
of the good men and women of the APC. Because the APC, APC has a party, they put their heart and soul into that process, and the outcome of the process is clear, submit that report. I think, um, Alpha Khan, I think you may have, for also help for throw light from the perspective of the government and give you some, some, some context and other good news, of course. So, uh, I'm not saying you know, I will give you the mic. I can swap with for take about my own small. So, we are working eight minutes. So that at three o'clock, I will open up for question and answer. I want to hold you to that side. Okay, go. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. Mr. Sepakrisi, you are very effective. It's the kind of replacement, the kind of person way they succeed you, way you the good thing that they say. I look at you. I think you could look. Congratulations. <laughs> good afternoon, my people. I get a lot of today. So, Mr. Tidia, I'm sure they see a lot of Latin. <laughs> today, oh dear, I thought to work with Nuti and Bull. I bet it was packed. Today, I'm glad you for telling me, say, I bring you good news. And what is that good news? We have an agreement. And that agreement is the recommendations that came out of the tripartite. We, the two parties, we, now the contending parties, don't present to His Excellency the President in the presence of international arbitrators and overseers, oversight, for saying yes, now this we agree. And for us as a country, we'll be in line. And we see the kind of uh, dividend will follow that single action in the month of June. The noise will not meet the international community in almost FC. Sierra Leone, the country we, we all know are greasy, at the top, most peaceful country in West Africa, and the third most peaceful country in Africa, and the 37th out of 193 countries in the world, most peaceful, then don't grieve for continuing that path of peace. Both the opposition, APC, and the SLPP don't grieve for saying it is better to Georgia than to World War, i.e., who don't fetch a game for anything. First of all, the president will be getting all effects. Can you imagine that? You get so jail with all effects. That is a soldier. The man committed himself to be a soldier. And a soldier's job is what? To fight. But this is our soldier with all effects. He's proven that for us. While he was a soldier, the need be arrived for going to the trenches for go fetch for we. While people that like we at the time who don't hide, we don't go overseas, we run. A lot of us, now uh, APC, SMB, we don't run, don't go. Indian and the trenches, they fetch for the country, for the soul of the country. But when you see, say, the people they really fetch with, now the same salon people there, where you the same mama born there, and the same family there, now you see, this don't make sense. At the time, in the second man, as soon as he became the final decider of that regime at the time, he said, this one is for them. And how he would all work? He go out against all odds. He go look for the protagonist, the man who Call his relative and say, I'll bring you camp, no camp to work. And he did bring him. At great danger to his own life. You must have a fish of water, the people that come with the high-minded. Let me get out. 
For them, they look into these problems where the people in the toxic, there are problems with our laws. He said, because this self don't face the same issue in 2012. I feel say there are problems with the laws. He said, don't look into them. He said, I'll call the ABC, I'll call other parties, I'll call CSO, I'll call international community. So I set up. So I set this up. Now in good faith. But man go shop them for the gun cutting truth. No, he did not do that. He did that for the good of the country. For let peace continue. Because a man will be living in peace. So we don't do that. And it's a pattern, it's very simple. He say to look into the laws and the regulations of elections in Sierra Leone so that what is happening will not happen again. There is nothing there to audit the results of elections. Nothing. Nothing. So, but when the people they say they want for all these results, it was easy. You have them. Well, I all know some of you don't be politicians before. Yeah. No politicians, not even they know the GRA reform in every police station. They all get so which means by the time election is done, one hour later when they don't count, every party know is starting. We come in an entire agent for you this year at that time. I want to see the time out. I was doing the talent center at that time. So I'm able to compile and know who shall we lost, who shall we win. So all this day when they asked me they want uh, RA forms for me, I thought it was mischief. The mischief was because they have it. However, now so when the ditch became, or when the loss came, you always say the referee don't rule you. But the referee rule you, where do you go? You go to the match commission. Not so. So if you lost election, say they go. Supreme Court. Not of course, no more. Supreme Court. But if you can't be seen, don't you Let them go and say, we'll go call the tripartite, but look at why you feel they wrote you. But well, not to forget country results back home. Because that type of don't get that power. But for more than they don't understand yesterday in the English way, not to now, you want to hear this way, because we don't understand. The English way of the Samura when we talked yesterday, that people in English didn't talk. And that English day, now the king knows English. Because the queen knows. Now the king knows English. And that says, simple. If they ask me for summarize that, what Dr. Samura said yesterday is that we accept that we have finished this type of time. And if we not finish this type of time, we get 80 recommendations. We are going to follow those 80 recommendations, but there are issues where you call divergent issues with the inside. With me, Samura Kamara, who go follow around small, small, till we come to it. You know, say that was Iguna Street too. Some will not tell nobody yesterday for Iguna Street or anything like that. He said this thing, he has to make a fire and say, I get justice within himself. How? By not going to court. He will tell me. However, <laughs> the one way we want to say is that Dr. Samura Kamara say he will prefer dialogue to anything else. So let all man know that say, now talk no more now before we talk to you. For this election, done. Donald Dustin, President Dr. Julius Madabio, is President of Sierra Leone, according to the laws. So they buy. Thank you very much. Ah. <laughs> I can call out the gold standard also for talk, for submit the talk, I make men a spokesman. And then a spokesman for the highest officer of the land, His Excellency the President. We take a quick this week, and you will be here to answer questions, including other questions related to the presidency. Or I'm not going to put that. Let's go. Hands up. Let's see. Uh, questions. I'll start with the journalist and boss. You know, lawyer, wait. Only the journalist and ask us. And then, and then, and then, and then conference this. So they start with the number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. So we take all six together quickly. Everybody, you know the rules, no preload, no preface. Go straight to the question. Let's go. Can I check the mic, please? Yes. Yeah, go on. Uh, it's been a eight about work on hands of the radio. I want to ask, uh, what is some of the steps that we will be taking for prevent similar breaches of confidentiality of his conduct in the future within the Auditor General's office and other public office things? And for uh, the president for the bar association, after I continue to monitor the tribunal process, 
And then how do we use the findings to improve the work of the Auditor General in office? Um, and then the question of Madam Taylor Pierce not getting the report. Um, Mr. Kano, I comment on that. And then obviously the question they ask where you say uh, well, and rights, rights to Parliament, we only comment on that. And of, of course, then it refers to, to Parliament and Parliament are separate. And of government, we said the Parliament will say take the report so. But on the question of waiting, government will do. I can say now very clearly to you that government they only follow the due process of following the law. So on throughout this process, whatever the law says, the next step is what the court government wants. If, if, uh, well, I would love to come to Mr. Kano quickly and then, and then I will give you a chance for comments on that question as well. Yeah. Um, I think we all know say, the issue of confidentiality with professionals. Um, every professional is expected for a, a comply with confidentiality, even we as lawyers, and more so for auditors. Um, if you say how my government will ensure that uh, those standards are complied with, uh, auditors will tell you, accountants will tell you, they have their own standards. Every professional body has their own standards. And with those standards, obviously, confidentiality is one of them. So it's part of your, when you, you join the service, wait and see you terms, your TOR or whatever. So these are things that are not new, where once you join an organization, they will tell you, say, this is not the thing that we for comply with. So maybe it's an issue of um, sensitization where um, professionals need to be sensitized about it so that at the end of the day they don't fall foul of the standards. But I think confidentiality cuts across all professional bodies, whether accountants, auditors, lawyers, doctors, it's, it's not new. So if you ask how government or whatever to improve that, I think it's the organizations and the individuals. It's, it's for them to actually you now take up the standards because these are uh, some people that don't commit themselves to, to be part of an organization. And if they want to gain respect as part um, of this organization, certain standards have to be adhered to. Because if you fail for adhere to those standards, then they obviously you're not going to get the respect as a professional. So that's the answer to that. Yeah. With uh, the regards to the jurors, why right now? Uh, first of all, I think we need to commend myself as a nation because the the Criminal Procedure Act, now uh, a act maybe especially for we lawyers who don't get around before more than five decades. Um, it's one of those colonial heritage we, we inherit from we colonial masters. Uh, Obviously, the law don't improve, things don't improve, things don't change. But we can still hold on to them, colonial laws in there, where um, as times um, things they change, we still know the benefit from their change. Now, the issue of um, the, the jurors, there has been an argument that every man is entitled to be judged by his own peers. But in reality, I think even at the outset, that is a myth. Because I don't think when you actually fall foul of the law, you, the, juror, the, the composition of the jurors will be by your own peers. As a lawyer sitting here, I guess if they actually charge me to court now, the chance of a lawyer would not be part of the juror is highly unlikely. So the question I'll put back to you, are those jurors my peers? The answer is no, they are not my peers. So I think it's a myth coined by uh, colonial masters or whatever for saying you're entitled to be judged by your own peers. Because that Makituma and which is there for a carpenter are not really your peers as a lawyer. But um, the, the, the strongest argument for the general service is that you get an advantage for putting your feet in the hands of uh, 12 individuals as against one individual who is a judge. But yes, you have a point there. But the danger with that, if they fail to understand that most of those legal issues are complex issues, we jurors, the layman, they don't understand. Now, if you go up for deal with um, complex issues, where most cases, like some of the evidence where prosecution is with, there are circumstantial evidence, what we call them, where they are not like direct evidence. 
The Jews don't understand that. And if the Jews don't understand that, they will not follow you. They've already made up their mind. If the Jews don't look Mr. Kano, say this Mr. Kano looks like a criminal. Eventually, they've made up their mind. It doesn't matter what the lawyers and say they will reach a decision. And not accountability. No. The and difference, the difference when you make a go. The people who get the difference with the judge and the jury. The only time you challenge a jury's verdict is when you argue that the judge misdirected. So if at the end of the day, God forbid, I stop somebody right here where everybody sees that. If I can influence the jury, or if my lawyer can influence the jury, and if I'm guilty, you cannot appeal against that. And normally, Mr. Kahn, I think one of the jury, no? Only all Yeah. One, one of them was enough for good man in that case. Of course. But on a more serious note, a lot of the delays in criminal trials, again, are the, ju are the jurors. Because if you get 12 parallel of jurors, if one absent or one in between sick or communication and money, they decide not for gap, the trial cannot proceed. And in some areas, it's just difficult to get jurors there. Because people don't want to go sit on day. Busy people they will tell me, say, I get work for them. I don't to go sit on a court all day. So until you able now a panel of jurors, that accused person will actually just remain in, in prison. So the argument for say, okay, the jury of service, I think the argument is based on emotions. I think when this happens, they think it's government trying to get their own way. But in all honesty, I don't think that is the case. I mean, you have Nigeria. They're not dispensed with the jury from 1969, quite a long time ago. Ghana don't amend their own jury from 12 to 7 and they get limited participation. Gambia don't dispense with the jury. Most of these African countries then don't get anything for the jury. Algeria, Angola, yes. Benin, Botswana, Burkina Faso, Burundi, Cameroon, Kenya, Chad, Congo, Djibouti, Egypt, Equatorial Guinea, Eritrea, Gabon, Gambia, Guinea, Ivory Coast, Kenya, Lesotho, Liberia, Libya, but I can continue. All luggage in the system. So, are we to say that any country where the minister don't mention justice not a prevail day? The answer is no. But I think it's because we don't perceive here for so long that removing the jury is political and it's for political. They have the treason act where at the end of the day it's for the defense, the accused, for now choose whether there is a jury or not. So it's not for the state. The act is still there under the treason act. So this is more for offenses. And the, and the fact, because of the passing of the Death Penalty Act, we don't dispense with the death penalty. So most of the, the, the sentence that we are sentenced to death, we no longer need our law books then. So the need for the jury is actually, is of no moment. So, how would you, Madam President, for comments on uh, protecting the bar from interference. I think somebody talked about interference from the executive political parties or other acts. Your comments. Thank you very much, Mr. Minister. And um, I think there's one more to that. Somebody may talk say, waiting will be the benchmark then we will put in place for fairness in this tribunal. And then waiting the association will do would they look out for, and if there are any red um, flags, which in the association would do. Now, the fairness, we they use we own Bible, where we lawyer then can refer to when are the law, and in this case, the Constitution, waiting for happen. So, when I make Abidon Ali a call on all the stakeholders that we involve, the AG's office, and um, parliament, for make sure say one, let them try for speed them up as possible. We will not say let them um, pass by passing the law, but let them follow the law and make sure say them careful this um, removal of the age in our parliament and let parliament self sit down now and make sure say them follow the law strictly, which is safe, and also do and speedily. Now, I also talk earlier and I say if we see red flags, we they come back now. Either we come now. Or we get with piano, we will make a statement. Or we the fella, the one that even parliament for make sure say waiting them for do them do 
waiting the AG to office for do, then do one back. We go make sure we did for make sure so they uphold the rule of law. And also, if they ask how the bar association will be free from interference from the executive, and I think I am what's legislative as well. Um, the best we can do really, again, we come back again for uphold this rule of law as yeah, so. We don't see, like today, waiting at the thing where we talk about, where we get the statement from the office of the press secretary with regards this tribunal, yeah, so, the report. We say, let them make sure they don't fall out. We question the deputy AG as to whether it will be subjected to the tribunal. But the DPP give clarification because when I start, I make a clear say, I don't receive the report. The minister asked a question earlier, say, he asked the DPP, waiting for the allegation then, and waiting the inside report, waiting to be careful the auditor general and in deputy in the first place to the tribunal. So these are questions. But again, we know say the report na limited people in na they get them. Because if you when you go to the constitution, for example, section one three seven, subsection five B, it says the tribunal can only give the report to the president. And I know say some person we don't raise an earlier on say why they don't give the auditor general the report. But if we're going strictly by this, it says you give to the president and it will be made available. This is what's in the constitution. These are not my words. So now then thing and then I will be the power. For make sure say waiting the law say the power. But maybe because we get waiting we can call in law say for fairness. Maybe the other side one see waiting day in the report, waiting the one is. Maybe they will one see and before they go parliament. But really, unless uh, they don't know all the arguments before the tribunal. Waiting the attorney general they do no more now now. Now for China and Parliament, let them vote on that. Whether well, for Kula or not for Kula. But um, DPP they are for guiding me on this. My officer will then go begin argue again. As in the lawyer, they will go begin argue again at Parliament. So the tribunal don't deal with all the arguments in the. So if I let the people of Salon out there know waiting really not the steps then. We they make sure say waiting they support. I go and say we are the top of the bar association because they can say we it comes to the legal conscience. Now we they make sure say the owner. Thank you, Madam President. There was this point about lack of trust and refusing to go to the. Um, yes, you talk saying that because um, Dr. Kamara say not be believe the justice system. I think you are coming to hand. Just a minute. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Frank Pokeri Alejo. Any side where anybody tell you, say, you have to be not believe by the court, not believe the justice system, most of it. Run away. Anybody may not believe in the rule of law is an outlaw. And countries operate under the rule of law. The law is the law. If you stay inside this country, you really want to carry on. You don't believe in the bigger system. That means we can, we can not decide, say, Mr. Frank Walker and Timah, they go knock out. There's no law. When somebody tell you that, run away from him. So for us, for sanity, for everything, we believe in the court system. And the court system, when you don't provide the rules under which they go in, then uh, we all, they are so, we get going, and we you see, we get justice. That's what happens everywhere. Now, 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 in America, a former president, he talks in, because it's unfair to him. But you get for whom I court. You know, deny. When they call, I go. So, if law no day, then we be in a country of outlaws, and we know what the cowboys used to do with the outlaws. And we also know that many distinguished members of the APC actually go public and say that they are very crazy. They say, you know, they go courts. Say, ah, because if you're bound by the process, even when you take part by the election, you don't really subject yourself to the law. And so you know now, after you say, no, 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 that party of the law, but we don't put that argument, we don't exhaust that now. I think we don't clarify that they we don't discuss this, all these points. Now, I think because they build in wisdom, called say, we don't look at the systems by which we exercise with franchise that this country. How the coins, how the new process, the laws, and all. Let we view them together in an open, inclusive process. And as I say, I commend the APC again. 
for the full participation, for who all agree on the recommendations, and we will take their recommendations in now. They don't pass them to His Excellency the President, His Excellency the Receiver. The Chief Minister don't table and a cabinet. Cabinets don't discuss and adopt the recommendations. They now say we will move on forward to the next stage. I'll be explaining and say some of their recommendations may require change in the law. Some of their recommendations may not just administrative steps they will take, or we ECSL or other bodies they will take. Some of the recommendations may actually require we for do the FLR law. All that day, we have to follow the steps and become a president. We have to force in the case, we have to force in force. I choose for the one and we take that forward. Final round of questions, and then we get to go. Yes, Bakar, gentleman at the back, number two, number three. No, you know, so you ask this one now. Okay, number four. Uh, okay, then let's just do four quickly, then we go. Start with Bakar. <coughs> Now we see a group of people and come together and form the Jewel Association. Now we don't pull Judas on the law books. Is it that they pull greater than the most? Number <laughs> uh, one. But um, just to come around, recently you visit the Chief Justice and he advised you say if we extend the olive branch to the police. You ready for do that now? Thank you, Mama Su. Mama Su is the name from the nature of this paper. Mama Su is the nature of this paper. No, never, never say no more. All right, go on, go on. It's a little sad and concern of the user regarding last week's press conference. Uh, there was a few editors came here who we are giving potential treatment as against the order. I want to know if we are the person who gave that instruction that that potential treatment is beginning. You said, why? It's like Palestine, I was at the end. Not so good to go to the salon. Number three, no good. Put that in number three. Yes, sorry. Yes, um, then I will learn from that. All right, quiet, please. It's okay that this expression I'll answer. Go ahead. Then I will learn from my right for your citizen newspaper to work with you. So, the question is as the presidential spokesman, I'll shed light on the Scapa Times report. I want to try to do all that back because we will take a critical look at the TOR invention accountability aspects. And the US ambassador is a and say the recommendations will be twofold. He said one will focus on um, electoral review for revision of the laws then and the other part therefore with accountability for make appropriate recommendations to the president for take action. But the eight recommendations they have not seen anything we get for do it the accountability aspect. Don, I don't have to look for the meeting, the president for the Sierra Leone Bar Association. And tomorrow we expect to get extraordinary confidence we die in our open secret as a result of some of the standards that we will get but they just concluded the election. So I want to know, which you do as a president for try to unite every aspect, including that we will be like Understanding the reporter, and then 
always there. We can always make sure so he meets that commitment. When we can fail, so we can end it. I can kind of apologize. I don't make and say that only since when I made this study, that we pay you the payment backlog of that understanding day. And I don't keep that word here. So the understanding and the commitment to her is sacrosanct. We also reserve the right for invite senior editors and media owners. And based on the understanding we get with as well, we can get a separate and different arrangement. We know in any way affects. It's a the parable of the Latina vineyard, they call that parable. They say we don't walk only in this vineyard, down the course, don't come, they call us minutes, why you get this one. And the master say, no, no, no. You join the vineyard, which the arrangement will not make with you. Once we stick with our arrangement, we all separate from this one. So that he, that he, that, that Jesus works now you so. Yeah. All right. So now we'll come to the uh, the question that we're gonna have about the Jewels Association. If I want to give up the talk before Kara says hello, we almost get permanent Jewel there. It sounds it sounds very amazing. But then they wouldn't say no more than a Jewel there. They did no more. Talking about again, I think at the end of this press conference, Minister of Information will put out uh, some some of the uh, points that we, uh, the AG's office and others have put together on why this change was necessary and important about the GEO system. So, these questions will be put in and people will want stuff for you as well. And then I think uh, there was a question why only two recommendations for the public? So, those two for you, and then at our presence, you get quite a few discounts. Yes. Again, I think that question did confirm why I think we need for the strength of the jurors there. Because again, it's just a sign of corruption when they go on with the jurors. Because then the individual are supposed to be independent and we will rely on. But today we get people already negotiate on their behalf, we get a case. So in other words, given the fact that I don't forget that third world country, my poor country as well, if obviously you have the means, you cannot guarantee the judgment of the jury they will be for. So, irrespective of what is on the offense. So, why we for allow that for continue? And why people never like continue for defend the jury system? It's not working, it's failing. So, it's high time we dispense with it and forget about it. So that then people will be out of jail. And then, why only two recommendations for the public? Uh, there's a third recommendation. Uh, I think the third recommendation was for um, the matter to be re referred to the ACC with regards to the audit of the Freetown City Council. That's the third recommendation. So it's now down to the president whether, again, that third recommendation, and go one refer now to anti corruption. But I think the main recommendation is the removal of the uh, Auditor General, where obviously um, that recommendation will get to Parliament and the Parliament will discuss that. Yeah. And like I said, the reason why we say we don't want now there is um, reports, now just listening to the questions here, we got to give respect to the parliamentarians. Hopefully, they get to come look at this report and form their own view and take decisions. That's why the section say two thirds. You don't vote blindly. You vote based on an informed position where you don't know which you will vote for. But now, if the public discourse don't take over the report, where by the time the report gets to parliament, people don't form their biases, their view. Now, even if you believe in the outcome or the conclusions of the report, you might be forced given the fact that you represent your people there, for letting you vote the wrong way. So I think the proper thing for do, obviously, the section again supports this view, because until Parliament take a decision, we don't know what's the fate of the Auditor General, because they have the final decision. Yeah. What we are faced with for now, we must be clear and continue to say that our recommendations. So when Parliament decides, then we definitely know now this is the position we parliament don't take. Then again, the parliament, somebody I think might ask where the parliament decide for votes against this or not getting two thirds. If the parliament, if they're not getting two thirds, then obviously they go taking position back. It's simple as that. Because in other words, the two thirds majority 
are not being achieved by parliament. So that's the position. So let's give parliament a chance. Let the lawyers have patience, because the lawyers have been part of the process as well. They are not pretend. They know exactly what was going on. They know everything now where they lead to this report.